Good morning, live on SABC2. Good morning. Now, even though it's been 20 years since the closure of Robben Island, memories are still alive and shared among former Robben Islanders. The book, The Lighter Side of Robben Island, is a, a collection of stories, really, with anecdotes that offer a peek into a different side of prison life, how political prisoners coped with the drill of a monotonous existence, and how, with the march of time, their experiences have become a subject of comic relief among themselves. Joining us now to tell us more on the book, we're joined in the studio, Peter Paul Nguenya, as well as Fiso Abtelis. Gentlemen, welcome to Morning Live. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning for you. So, I mean, and, and this is interesting because often, you know, Robin Island, Peter, seems like it was a tough place. Yes, of and, course and, and I think the perspective doesn't always come through that there were moments where, where, where there was humor and there was laughter and stuff like that. Were there moments like that? There were. We, we were not just prisoners or political animals, but we were people who were ordinary people who had families, uh, yeah. friends. Uh, we played sports, we enjoyed music, and uh, we tried to make light of, uh, of, of the harsh conditions of the place that we were at by engaging in all those activities. Yeah, Swissa, and that sort of made it easier? Yes, it, uh, it, it did. You know, we tried to, go to create normal conditions and abnormal conditions. So, uh, look, we, we're young. We're in our early 20s, uh, early 30s. And we we're, we're, we're boys uh, concerned about the little things which people outside were concerned about. Yeah. So we couldn't, it couldn't be politics from uh, morning to noon to the evening and so on. We had uh, those times where we really decided to be, you know what, we are going to be boys. We have been deprived uh, of our childhood, of our boyhood, but uh, they were not going to stop us behind bars. There's a, Peter, there's a, there's a very strong influence of mafia speak, <laughs> uh, Sicilian talk. I mean, I, I just went to a picture and I saw uh, there was one Nelson Mandela, the Don, mm -hmm. the Capo di, ca di Tutti yeah. Capi or something like that, and Walter Zizulu was the conciliary. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, people will say that because after all these organizations were still banned, and in fact, if ever we were found to be advancing those interests or policies of the band organization, they still took you to Cape Town, tried you, and you would get an additional four years on top of the sentence you were doing. But uh, the structures of our organizations did exist, and the leadership was, of course, uh, secret, although you could have uh, an idea of who the leaders were. I know in later years I also occupied that position, but there were three of us. It was Lee Zongungwane, um, Trigozan, and myself. But it was only Trigozan that the, the rest of the, of the population knew as their leader. Us were in the background. So we would see the three of us make those decisions. So you would say that uh, maybe there was a mafia element to it yeah. because of the secrecy. But there was a reason for that, not because we were involved in any criminal activities. We had to guard against that because the authorities were not supposed to know what it is that we were up to. So you have to be, you have to be fairly strategic. Yes. Yes. So talk a little bit about funny moments that, mm -hmm. that you remember and that are, that are documented in the book. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I, I like the story which uh, Peter Paul uh, tells, uh, the, the, the story of a perfume. You know, most of the people have been to Robin Island for a long time. Uh, I'm sure during those times it was unknown for men to put on deodorants and perfumes. Okay. So when you no came, brute then. no. So when <laughs> or you, shield. Yeah. So when you came, you know, he had he had he had been a, a, an executive. He had worked for IPM. So this uh, perfume thing to him was uh, was a usual thing. So he, he comes to Robin Island uh, in a B section, which was the section of the leadership. Uh, and then it, it, it smells like a, a, a lady. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and then a commission, a, a, com, a, com, a commission was set. Yeah. A commission was set, and <laughs> that was a serious thing. Remember, in this section, there's uh, Warm Cove, yeah. there's Babum Kwai, there's Harry Chi, and so on. There's so some serious people. This is, this is a serious matter. And uh, <laughs> they, they appoint a very serious commission yeah. headed by one Tokyo Sekwale to, to investigate him. So <laughs> Why does it smell like that? <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he comes to him and says, Peter Paul, what is this thing that's meaning? <laughs> and he, kept, he, he liked Peter Paul. They came from Dube. Both of them came from Dube. So, but he had to, to carry out the, the work of the organization. So what, you know what Peter did? He just took his, 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 his perfume and sprayed him. <laughs> <laughs> so so th from that time, Tokyo was just compromised <laughs> all the way. <laughs> <laughs> what perfume was this? It was not a miss, uh, but oh. uh, I didn't really bring it to jail myself. You <laughs> yeah. know, uh, my, I was sentenced here in Johannesburg. 
the Rand Supreme Court, and then obviously there were crowds who came to support us. And there was this, I think she was a, a, a student from VETS, and uh, she said to me, you know, I know that you're doing this for all of us, and I would like to give you something yeah. so that you can remember me with. She gave me a parcel, which she, I didn't open it, but when I only opened it, when I got to Robben Island, then I found How that. How did it get through security, though? No, they, because it was my personal possession, I don't think, I, they just, I, I would take it from prison to prison, because I, I moved from here to Sun City, Kronstadt, Colesberg, Baltimore, and then eventually Robben Island, and it just got through. And I had forgotten about it. Then when I opened it, I, I found it was a full range yeah. of Aramis products. Yeah. So uh, this is a smell. <laughs> 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 yeah. Smell like a lady. <laughs> yeah. so what, what, what was the outcome of the hearing? Of, of the hearing? No, it was education. They agreed that uh, I was miles ahead of all of them. <laughs> uh, and then I had to educate them. <laughs> and, 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 and we started with our own. <laughs> <laughs> and brute. And brute. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but al al although we, we say it's, it's the lighter side of, of, of Rome yeah. Island, I think, again, there are things that we would like to highlight here. Yes. Um, Very briefly, yeah, we're we yeah. out of time. I think ma the, the principal amongst them yeah. is that no matter what conditions you find yourself, yourselves yeah. in, and especially for our young people, you can make get, get get best out of it, and I think that's that's that's, that's what happened. People would have expected that way would, would be there and uh, uh, dejected yeah. and so on, but and we tried. It's a too. different story yeah. altogether. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, uh, Sfiso and Peter, telling us a little bit about the stories of the lighter side on Robben Island. The book is on in all leading bookstores. Ne? Yes, it okay. is. It okay. has okay. been since last week Friday. Nice Christmas gift, yes. Fred Kumalo, Perry Harper, and Gugu Kunene making.